do it for a day. Any person you come up <laughs> you with. You should do it for a day. For a day? Yeah. I'll do it forever if you can get me up one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Todd Rusty gets in here. <laughs> uh, the T- Chicago Tribune interviewed Barack Obama yesterday after uh, the Blagojevich scandal broke. And they asked him directly, have you ever spoke to Governor Blagojevich about the Senate seat? He said, I have not discussed the Senate seat with the governor at any time. My strong belief is that it needed to be filled by somebody who was going to represent the people of Illinois and fight for them. And beyond that, I was focused on the transition. And that was before and after the election, yes. Now, here's a key point. Are you aware of any conversations between Blagojevich or Chief of Staff John Harris and any of your top aides, including Rahm Emanuel? So maybe you didn't talk to the governor, but did your aides talk to him? Rahm, perhaps. Let me stop you there, Barack Obama said, because it's an ongoing investigation. I think it would be inappropriate for me to, you know, remark on the situation beyond the facts that I know. And that's the fact that I didn't discuss this issue with the governor at all. I didn't discuss it. So perhaps... Well, this is the, But this is the last thing that the world needs. Never mind America. Mm-hmm. This is the last thing the world needs, is that the man who's going to come in and uh, on his back basically... Uh, help to uh, prop up the world's economy, which is Mm -hmm. in dire uh, predicament right now. Look at the World Bank this morning, what they've said. And and at the end of the day, to have him, even, you know, his credibility remotely tarnished, he's done a magnificent job as a president-elect. He is just, uh, he's been proven himself to be a leader in a, uh, at a, at a time when the country and the world needs a leader. Yes. And we should all hope, right. we should all right. hope hey, that Kevin, there's right. nothing an, an that harms him others. or his administration. You know, you know what? You want to talk about the other, the other shoe to drop. You know, people are talking about in economic terms, the you know, uh, consumer credit market is next. Well, I've got to tell you something. If there is anything that has to do with, with, with the uh, you know, president-elect and his credibility, that's the shoe. That's a nuclear bomb. I don't think you paint the whole staff with the same brush. I mean, that that person who's underneath her desk uh, in the fetal position (laughs) didn't have a clue, probably, until she saw it on Fox News. He's what? But you You know know how this guy operates, don't you? If you work with him, for him, you see how he operates in general. Maybe, maybe not. I I can't. I, I, you know... Uh, I, I can't say that. I mean, with Spitzer, there were people on his staff who, you know, he Had called no and they said, this is a joke, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was... But that's because they, it was very out of character, well, right? Here, it's actually in okay, character. That's that, 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 that's entirely consistent. But still, I mean, the fact is. that they don't learn from others' mistakes, I mean, it's just every other month, it seems, some politician is disgracing themselves in some way. I mean, a couple months ago, you had Vito Fasella. Couple, you know, you, it's ongoing. Charlie Rangel. You've got um, uh, Senator from Toe Tapper. Why am I drawing a blank? Oh, I need oh, a coffee. Uh, the guy in the restroom. Yeah. Oh God. Questions <laughs> surrounding that. You had, I mean, before the election, you had questions about Pelosi, money going to her husband from her pack. Where's that story? I have I mean, it's just. Interesting Spitzer. email from Paul Morris. He says, I'd like to know who ordered the wiretap of a sitting governor and what that decision was based on initially. Well, I have the answer to that. Uh, from the New York Times, Barack Obama made a phone call three months ago to his political mentor, Emile Jones Jr., who's president of the Illinois Senate. And he was calling to um, push for the passage of an ethics bill. And apparently Emile Jones Jr. Uh, was against it, uh, had been a critic of the legislation, Blagojevich had vetoed the legislation, uh, but after the call from Obama, the Senate overrode the veto and that prompted the governor to press state contractors for campaign contributions before the law's restrictions could take effect on January 1st. So when this law passed mm-hmm. that the governor didn't want to see passed, then he started making all kinds of phone calls. Hey, you've got to give me that money fast. And so there was a tip-off to federal agents that Blagojevich was now, and, and I don't know where that came, it must come from within his own uh, well, huh? office, somewhere, someone who knew the governor or maybe had been contacted by the governor, for a campaign contribution said, hey, you guys, this guy is out of control. That's probably more likely. So <laughs> yeah. that's how they obtained wiretaps to then listen in on the governor, who was apparently aggressively soliciting contributions and uh, seeking favors. We, we feed a lot of this stuff by the way the position is set up. I mean, the governor, you know, you've got the state troopers, you've got lights and sirens everywhere you go, you've got a helicopter, you've got a plane. I mean, yeah. there's, there, it becomes, well, you know, I own this stuff. 
<laughs> I'm the, you know, I'm running this. This is my thing. Right. I'm gonna. And he's making. I'm gonna sell this uh, this thing off and make some. But you know, he was making 180 thousand, which I guess was not enough. He wanted to make more. He said he wasn't making enough money. Well, the idea there is to get out of government and go into business. Right. And Actually, you done. Done. You know, exactly. He should have done a stock track. Oh, here we go. And we got the governor. Can we put that up? Punch that up. We have aerials now of the governor in an <laughs> SUV. Slow, high, slow speed chase. <laughs> slow speed chase. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the lower third on Fox News Channel moments ago was governor departs for something like for, for destination location. unknown. What would it say? Undisclosed location. Undisclosed location. So we don't know where he's going, but our uh, Fox affiliate in Chicago, WFLD, the O&O uh, Fox station in Chicago, is their helicopters tracking the governor's movements now. I mean, the, the governor, if his approval rating was low before this, 13%, where is it now? Who's Negative integers, yeah. Uh, How does that happen? So, And another thing you have to keep in mind, if he is this arrogant, you know, guy that doesn't have much support in his home state, I'm guessing he has a lot of enemies based on the way that he conducts himself on these wiretaps. Doesn't sound like the most cordial guy. Yeah. It's, it's like the Elliot Spitzer case in the sense that he's not going to have many allies coming to his defense. I mean, yeah. when you're that type of guy, your constituents don't really like you. You're, you're cursing out this one. You're manipulating others for money. I'm guessing he's not going to have many people coming to his defense. That was Spitzer's biggest problem. But he rolled over so yeah. many people that when it came time, he made so many enemies. Nobody wanted to defend him or everyone defend just him. was they singing off the... They wanted to crucify him. They exactly. Even, even tougher. Sex, right? I mean, sex, you could at least say, if you wanted to defend Spitzer, you could at least say... He's a good governor. He was a good attorney general. He's an honest guy. Yeah, but it wasn't this just is an sex. aberration. It wasn't right? just sex. Well, yeah, uh, it was relative to this, to yeah. selling a Senate seat. Yeah. yeah, it's fairly small potatoes. I have to read. But this it's the email. same thing. It's power. I have to read it's, this email from Chi Chi. It's powerless. very, very important. Very uh, uh, pertinent to what we're talking about. My name is Chi Chi. I saw your profile today in GreenSingles.com and became interested in you. I am an easygoing person, humble and respectful. I write with hope that you will reply <laughs> me, as I would like to know more about you. <laughs> Please write me with this address. Only Chi Girl. I hope to hear from you soon, for I have something very important to share with you. Thank you, Chi Chi. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just Maybe we should craft the response on Yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> Dear Chi Chi, you sound hot. <laughs> All right, so he's, Dave he's Tanner writes, I offer 10 bucks, but in Canadian dollars. Dave's in Nova Scotia. For your seat. For my seat. 10 bucks. Let's not, uh, let's not attack the Canadians. Ken said, oh, are you Canadian? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Perhaps he didn't, I'm sorry. Perhaps he didn't see Frost Nixon, there Ken writes. Uh, he won't step down. He will use governor's seat to bargain with to get less jail time, Stephen St. Louis suggests. I don't think he can do that, can he? Uh, if he gets convicted, he's yeah. got nothing to bargain He's got nothing yeah. at all. Where could the governor be going, do you think? I don't know, but he really should be in a white SUV. Don't they you? just yeah. rolled through that stop sign. That was not a full stop. <laughs> I think now he can be charged with running a stop sign. Isn't it remarkable how we've come full circle with OJ? Yeah. And now this. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Shaw writes, he hasn't been convicted yet. Even if he is guilty, he has the presumption. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Did the prosecutor uh, say that? He really didn't. He was pretty much... Well, and he's got a reputation of his own, doesn't he? As being a real, almost like a spitzer in terms of the way that he goes after people. Right. Mm -hmm. And he tries to showboat a little bit when he gets up there, which I don't think is necessarily good for the case against Blagojevich. I mean, I think you want to play these things as um, uh, kind of statesmanlike yeah. when you get up there and, and, and not be uh, a little bit hysterical. You're, you're a prosecutor. Like, it's not that staggering when you see this stuff that you do yeah, all the time. Yeah, but apparently it was so uh, deep, this, this investigation ran so deep that the prosecutor couldn't sleep at night. This is what someone reported earlier, that, that he couldn't sleep. He was so, so upset about it, and he just couldn't wait. Anymore. And probably it didn't help when the governor yesterday, or Monday, we, we ran that before we had audio, right? 